Welcome to Eligible Monster, where we do a lot of stuff here involving video games, and one of which is explain the lore and synopsises of the stories that have happened in your favorite video games. With Modern Warfare getting its remake, and then a remake of the original remakes, and all kinds of annoying stuff that's going on, we thought it'd be fun to do a recap of the original Modern Warfare storyline 1 through 3. That's pretty much it, I don't need much more of an intro to this. Let us know in the comments down below other stories you want us to give you a synopsis on, and I'm going to apologize now if I butcher any of these Middle Eastern names. Trying to find where they were pronounced in the video games a little rough when I was doing the recording. It's 2011 and the world is in turmoil. Russia is in the middle of a civil war between the current government and the ultra-nationalists who wish to return to the glory days of the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, a general in the Middle East named Khalid al-Assad has begun a violent coup speaking out against the US at the same time. During this, John Soap Maktavish arrives for his first day with the British Special Forces. He meets the team, including Captain Price. Soap doesn't have much time to get to know his unit, though, as they are quickly dispatched to the Burring Strait. Reports indicate that nuclear weapons have been smuggled on a freighter, and after a brief firefight, the team discovers the nuclear package and a manifest that points to General Al-Assad as the buyer. The ship is quickly under attack by Russian MiGs, and the team barely escape with their lives. In the Middle East, Al-Assad's coup has been successful and the former president has been executed. Captain Price and Bravo team are then dispatched to Russia, where they're tasked with rescuing the informant that supplied them with the intel on the nuclear bomb. Bravo team must fight through the ultra-nationalist soldiers, finally rescuing Nikolai. Meanwhile, with the death of the former president and Al-Assad's anti-US preaching, the United States has decided to invade and try to capture General Khalid. The USMC First Force Recon, led by Lieutenant Vasquez, Sergeant Jackson and Sergeant Griggs, invades and assaults a town where Al-Assad is believed to be making a broadcast from a local TV station. Assaulting the building finds Assad is not in the town and the broadcast is merely a recording. With Nikolai secured, Bravo Team's exfil chopper is shot down and they must sneak and eventually fight their way to the new exfil site, aided by an angel on their shoulder and the form of an AC-130 Spectre gunship. In the Middle East, First Recon is sent to aid a stuck M1 Abrams, forming a defensive position to repel Al-Assad's forces. While the engineers repair the tank, the Marines stand by waiting for the extraction. With the invasion seemingly complete, Al-Assad is still not captured, and Lieutenant Vasquez's squad is informed that Al-Assad has a nuclear weapon and the U.S. forces are ordered to evacuate. When the team's Apache escort is shot down, the team makes the decision to go back for the pilot. After rescuing him, the bird takes off once again, but the bomb is detonated. The entire team goes down. Either people killed in the crash or the nuclear fallout afterwards. Bravo team then gets the intel that Al-Assad is at his safe house. Deployed, they take down the soldiers in the area and capture Assad alive. He doesn't stay that way long though, as Captain Price executes him for his crimes. But they have a name. The bomb wasn't Al-Assad's at all, but a man named Imram Zakayev leader of the Russian ultra-nationalists, and a man from Price's past. It was 1996 when Lieutenant Price and Captain McMillian were dispatched to an abandoned wasteland in Propriet to assassinate Imrim Zakayev, an ultra-nationalist who was performing a weapons deal. It was there that they waited three days, finally having their target in sight. Price took the shot with a 50 cal sniper rifle, believing the man to be dead. The two soldiers fought off the ultra-nationalist soldiers until they were extracted. After telling the story, Bravo team must now hold off the rest of Assad's remaining forces as they wait for their USMC-led exfiltration. Knowing who the true enemy is, Bravo team works alongside the members of the USMC First Recon and Russians in finding Zakaya's son, Victor. Cornering the criminal, Victor chooses to take his own life instead of giving up his father. Zakayev is furious over his son's death, and he decides to launch two nuclear missiles at the United States. Bravo team and their task force halo jump into the facility to stop the bombs. Luckily, they manage to detonate the missiles harmlessly in the atmosphere before they reach their targets, and the team is able to escape in Russian vehicles. Zakaya's forces chase the soldiers down the Russian highway, following them in trucks and with a hind helicopter. With the bridge in front of them destroyed, Bravo team is now forced to make a last stand against Zakaya's soldiers and the explosion of a fuel tanker knocks out the team. Soap comes to being dragged by Sergeant Griggs. The Marine fires his pistol, trying to drag his teammate into cover. And as his pistol locks empty, he switches to his saw. But he's quickly shot down by Zakaev's soldiers. A wounded Soap watches as Zakaev struts forward, executing Gaz and the rest of Bravo team. But the exploding helicopter distracts them and Captain Price slides his pistol to the newest recruit. Soap takes the weapon, he rolls, he fires, killing Zakayev and his two men. 
As the Russian forces arrive on the scene, Soap turns to see a medic trying to resuscitate Price before everything fades to black. Days later, the media reports on several nuclear tests being conducted around the world, hiding the fact that the end was almost near. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, even though the members of Bravo Team gave their lives, the world doesn't always have a happy ending. Continuing their civil war, the Russian ultra-nationalists won out against the Russian government. Zakaev is seen as a hero of the people, and a statue of him is raised in the Red Square as the people praise him as a martyr. A new threat rises in the form of Vladimir Makarov, the former lieutenant of Zakov. Makarov spends the next five years conducting a terrorist campaign against Europe out of revenge. It is now 2016 and PFC Joseph Allen is conducting operations with the 75th Ranger Regiment in Afghanistan. His skill impresses General Shepard and he's recruited into the top tier counter-terrorism unit under the General's command, Task Force 141. Two other members of 141 are quickly tasked with infiltrating a Russian airbase. High atop the snowy Tiam Shane Mountains, Captain Soap and Sergeant Roach sneak their way in, avoiding the Russian soldiers until they acquire an ACS module from the captured satellite. With the module in hand, Soap and Roach are forced to shoot their way back down the mountain, but are able to make their exfil. Recruited into the 141, PFC Allen is given the dangerous mission of infiltrating Makarov's terrorist ring. Under the guise of Alexei Borden, Allen joins Makarov's team in mowing down a group of civilians and soldiers in the international airport in Russia. They're given one order before the shooting begins. No Russian. As they make their escape, Makarov turns shooting Allen in the head, leaving him for dead. He has known the man was undercover this whole time. The Russian military, finding an American at the scene of the crime, declare war on the United States for this unprovoked terrorist attack. An invasion is launched against the eastern seaboard and the U.S. is thrown into turmoil. As war rages, the 75th Ranger Regiment is deployed to Virginia, defending the area from the red dawn of the Russian military. Sergeant Foley's squad is tasked by General Shepard with extracting a high-value informant, but they discover that the man is already dead under mysterious circumstances. As the Rangers fight along the east coast, Sergeant Foley's squad makes its way to D.C., defending civilians as best as they can. And when their helicopter is shot down, the squad makes a desperate last stand as they begin to run out of ammo. As the world begins to tear itself apart, the rest of Task Force 141, led by Captain Soap, is dispatched to Rio de Janeiro. They find some evidence that Makarov is behind the airport attack from a weapons dealer. And while they gain no evidence, they discover that Makarov's greatest enemy is being held in a Russian gulag. Soap's team is dispatched to the prison, tasked with extracting prisoner 627. Inside, after some heavy fighting, the prisoner is discovered to be Captain Price, thought dead these last five years. Price takes control of the unit, believing that they must stop the war in the United States before they continue the search for Makarov. 141, under Price's command, hijacks a Russian submarine and launches a ballistic missile at the United States. Price detonates the warhead in the upper atmosphere, creating an EMP, knocking out all electricity on the east coast of America. Sergeant Foley's squad is making their last stand, and as that EMP hits, it knocks out the Russian helicopters, taking them down into the ground. They move through the darkened city, fighting against the Russian forces that seem lost, and Foley and his squad aid the U.S. forces in retaking the White House. They manage to plant flares on the roof, stopping the Air Force from destroying the building, believing it to be under Russian control. 141 continues to search for Makarov, with Price and Soap searching for him in the Afghanistan plane graveyard. Roach and Ghost are looking through one of his safe houses, and Ghost and Roach find and tell about Makarov's whereabouts. They manage to fight through the Russian soldiers, reaching their extraction point, but they're betrayed by General Shepard, who executes them. With Price and Soap learning about the General's betrayal, they must fight their way through a running gunfight between Makarov and Shepard's men. They eventually contact Makarov, offering to kill the General for him, learning that Shepard is holed up in an Afghan mountain base. The two men launch a suicide mission to take him down. The General tries to escape, causing both Price and Soap to pursue him down the river in several boats. And when the General tries to board a helicopter to escape, Price shoots out the rotors, causing it to crash. When Soap comes down, he attempts to kill Shepard with his only knife, but the General overpowers him, stabbing him in the chest. Shepard is about to shoot Soap when Captain Price launches into the man. The two begin to battle, but the General is able to overpower Price and is about to kill him. Soap manages to pull the knife out of his chest, throwing it at the traitor. The blade sticks in the man's eye, killing him instantly. The men are extracted, but must go into hiding since they're wanted across the globe. In Modern Warfare 3, 
There is little time and both Price and Soap are hunted men. Arriving in an old friend's safe house, Soap is given emergency medical care, but Makarov has not given up on finding the two men. Price must work alongside an ex spesnast member known as Yuri in repelling the enemy forces. In the United States, the invasion is continuing. Delta Force operators in Team Metal are deployed to New York City, fighting alongside US forces to take back the city. Later, aided by the Navy SEALs, the team captures a Russian submarine and turns its weapons against the rest of the fleet. With the US retaliation, the Russian army pulls out of the city. Months pass, and the Russian president announces his plans to make peace with America in an upcoming summit in Germany. However, Makarov's forces crash the president's plane, taking the Russian president captive. Price and Soap have gone dark with their friends Nikolai and Yuri, but word has reached them that Makarov is going to conduct an arms deal with the PRF militia in Sierra Leone. The men come out of hiding, infiltrating the village, discovering that the deal was for chemical weapons that are meant for attacks across Europe. Price reaches out to Captain McMillan in the British SAS. In return for the information, Price asks for any intel that they might have on Makarov's whereabouts, his former commander pointing him to the Somalian warlord known as Warab. The chemical attacks are launched across Europe and the British SAS are unable to stop them. With these attacks weakening the country, the Russian military attacks Germany, forcing the US to deploy Team Metal to the summit to rescue the vice president. Price, Soap, Yuri, and Nikolai capture Warabi in Somalia, and after interrogating him, the warlord tells them that the bomb maker is in Paris. With this intel, Team Metal deploys with the French GIGN capturing the bomb maker, pointing them to a meeting with Makarov in Prague. Soap, Price, and Yuri arrive in the city with the intent of killing Makarov. Price gets into position, with Soap and Yuri providing overwatch from a nearby church, but it is revealed that Makarov knew that they were coming and knows that Yuri is working with them. He blows up the church, wounding both men, and when the three soldiers manage to escape to a nearby safe house, Soap dies from his wounds. He uses his last breath to tell Price about Makarov and Yuri. Price threatens to kill Yuri, but Yuri explains that he had worked with Makarov in the past, but he tried to prevent the airport attack, and when he did, Makarov shot and wounded him. The two men continue to work together, assaulting another of Makarov's bases. There, they discover the whereabouts of the captive Russian president. Working alongside Team Metal, Price and Yuri are deployed to a Siberian diamond mine where they rescue the captured president, ending the war between Russia and the United States. The conflict has ended across the world, but not for the two men who still have a score to settle. Price and Yuri discover that Makarov is held up in a hotel in Dubai. The two men, clad in heavy armor suits, assault the hotel, killing Makarov's men. When a helicopter attacks them, the juggernaut suits light on fire and the soldiers are forced to discard them. The two men continue their fight through the hotel until the building collapses beneath them with several helicopter attacks. When Yuri is impaled by a piece of rebar, he tells Price to keep going. Price manages to catch up with Makarov and bring down the helicopter that he was trying to escape in. As the two men struggle, Makarov is about to kill Price, but Yuri manages to intervene. Makarov shoots the man, but Price manages to knock his gun away, strangling him to death with a cable. Wrapping the cable around a beam, Price leaves the war criminal hanging, executed for his crimes. And there you have it, all three modern warfares of the original game. Now, I know some other channels have done this, I know we're not a heavy Call of Duty channel, but I wanted to know if you wanted our take on some of these characters' more deeper life stories. Like, uh, there's a lot more to Ghost than is actually in the games due to a lot of extra stuff that came out. There's a lot more to Price for the exact same reason, comic books and books and things like that. We can bring you all of that, and I wanted to get your opinion. Do you want that? Did you enjoy this? Do you want us to cover that kind of a thing? Either way, I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more of these every week, and don't forget you can find us right here every week with two to three videos about your favorite video game lore or discussions. Thank you for your time and we'll see you next time right here.